I was gonna do the video out here, but something tells me that is not conducive to a good time. <laughs> Let me get my house shoes. Mm -mm, not today, Satan. All right, so the lighting probably isn't gonna be as good as it would have been had I been outside because the sun is behind me, but um, you know, I think anything's better than the video, the, the lighting of the video I posted two days ago or yesterday or whenever the hell that was. So today will be my third day. Yeah, technically third day halving my Zoloft dose, but fourth day tapering because that first day I didn't take it at all because I forgot. Then I, then I started tapering. Anyway, it's all very confusing, but I'm feeling pretty decent, to be honest. Like, yesterday the brain zaps were pretty bad. I ended up going to sleep pretty early with a really bad headache. But, um, I woke up today and I took my normal Adderall dose. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that in the video before. So, I am on a, um, 20... Is it milligram for Adderall? I don't really know, but it's 20 XR of Adderall. And one thing I had noticed was I didn't feel like my body was benefiting from the full effects of my prescription because of the Zoloft. Um, because Zoloft kind of makes me feel tired all the time. But then when I go to sleep, it kind of won't let me sleep. It causes insomnia. So it was just kind of like a big tug of war in my body. Um, but today... I woke up, I even started like being productive before I took my Adderall, which was amazing. That like never happens. I ate breakfast. I made overnight oats like two days ago. So um, I kind of uh, quartered it so I can, um, you know, I have, I have some overnight oats for, you know, the next two days now. Um, and yeah, I'm feeling fine. Um, not jittery, but also not tired, which is great. Um, it, that's a welcomed change from what I had been doing on, like, how I had been doing on Zoloft. Sorry, I got tripped up on the fact that I said welcomed change because I've gone through 30 years, a journalism degree and an English degree, thinking that's what you're supposed to say. It's actually welcome. A welcome change. Blew my mind. Um, so anyway, um... I think I'm going to head over to my parents and um, my plan today was to go to this candy shop that my dad and I used to always go to called Abbott's um, because they have sugar-free truffles and stuff and you know he he does the sugar-free thing um, I won't like talk about his medical diagnoses here but um yeah so that's one thing that's one constant is, has been the uh sugar-free truffles but unfortunately um i didn't think ahead and of course abbott's is closed on sundays my bad sorry i keep touching my hair i actually got my hair um done yesterday that's actually one thing i should have vlogged but i did not um we got some little light pieces in there and one thing that like genuinely does make me feel better like as a girly girl is I really do like getting my hair done I like getting my nails done um, I also got my nails done this was on Wednesday though I don't know if I showed you in the last video probably not it was very daring for me to get white nails um, especially that I've been like on such a cleaning kick lately um, so, you know, there's going to be, like, all the grime and stuff. So, I've been very careful with these. I've been trying to um, wear gloves when I can or, um, I don't know, just be, like, more delicate with them. And this is definitely, I think this is a good challenge for me. Like, as someone who um, sometimes can be a bit messy or, like, not necessarily careless, but... I don't really tend to pay attention and then I ruin my nails. These are the ones I really cannot ruin because I'm stuck with these for another three weeks. So, yeah. <sighs> Sorry to keep meandering, but, um, yeah. Today has potential to be a good day. Um, I'm gonna probably just head to Meijer or Walmart or something and see if there's anything I can get for my dad. Um, I love my dad so much and 
you know, he deserves honestly more than a mug and a card, but what can you do? Also, to be fair, my dad doesn't like anything. Like, I love him to death, but my dad doesn't really like anything. Um, talking books, maybe, but uh, the CD player in his car is broken. Um, he he doesn't want to um, transition over to, like, iTunes or Spotify or anything, so, you know. Um, maybe I'll get him, like, a t-shirt, like, best dad ever. I'm also realizing I need to post this after I go to see my parents because then my dad will see this and be like what do you mean I don't like anything don't you know I like the soccer the football whatever he doesn't really talk like that he's actually British I think we've talked about this before yeah my dad's British so it's more like what do you mean I don't like anything he also doesn't talk like that <laughs> it's kind of funny because my dad when he's in England, like when he goes back to England, people think that he's an American tourist trying to speak like he's British. But then when he's here, like he's gotten a lot of different responses. Like some, some people have asked if he's Australian. Like some person was so confident in the, the idea of my dad being Australian that he was like, um, what was it? It was like, it was like winter in Indy, well in America. And this guy was like, oh, it's much hotter back at home, isn't it? And my dad's like, no? I hear a buzzing. Maybe this is just like my brain telling me I hear a buzzing, but if one of those wasps got into my house, I'm gonna be so sad. I didn't post the video of the last time that a wasp got into my house, but it wasn't pretty, man. I, I did make a video. Actually, you know what? When I'm editing this, I'm gonna see if I still have the video in my phone because it was a nightmare, and then you see why I should not live alone. I'm like waiting for like a monster to pop up. And say boo. It's gonna be so embarrassing when I do find this motherfucker, because I'm gonna scream. I'm gonna drop my phone. The little children who are playing in my backyard right now are gonna freak out. They're gonna be like, why is the neighbor screaming? Bloody fucking murder. Can I just spray it? Will it come after me? Go outside. The door is right there, dude. If anyone finds this. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. But, oh my god. I'm being held hostage in my bedroom because I don't know where the fuck this, uh, this flying insect is. Anyway, going back to the whole Zoloft withdrawal situation. So, um, the thing is, when I went into, I didn't go in. When I video chatted my doctor initially, uh, I think I did mention this in the last vlog. I may have mentioned it, but then, um, but then uh, took it out in, when I was editing. I'm not really sure, but... I'll recap. So I video chatted my doctor um, mid quarantine. This is after I'd already gotten back on Zoloft. So I got back on Zoloft, I believe, May of last year of 2020. A couple months later, I was like, I still feel terrible. Um, is there a way I can up my Zoloft dose? And he kind of said, you never want to up Zoloft because it'll make you feel like a zombie. So you can experiment with lowering your Zoloft, um, which I don't know if that was necessarily the best advice, but like the way that I see that is, is he's kind of like out of the equation and it's kind of up to me. Like, do I want to continue on my, what am I on? I'm on a low dose too. Do I want to continue on my 50 or do I want to like taper? So I made the decision back then to start tapering. Um, that first time uh, was extremely difficult. Um, ultimately, I ended up failing, of course, went right back on to Zoloft because the brain zaps lasted well, well over three weeks. And I was just like, I can't do this anymore. Like I was actually, um, I believe I was starting school. That aligns because I started back in school in August of last year. So that aligns. So I was trying to get off of it before I went back to school. Um, 
because I just felt like if it's not going to help anyway and it's causing like intense night sweats and nightmares and x y and z I'm not going to talk about all of the symptoms because some of them are pretty like awful but um just know that they're not it's not fun it's it's not a fun medication to be on if your body doesn't like SSRIs or whatever um and I'm I'm starting to just think mine doesn't but yeah so I was um I was trying to get off before I started back to school um and uh and I explained to the doctor that I was having issues um sleeping but it was weird because the Zoloft definitely makes me tired all day long but then when it comes to sleep I've been tired all day long I've been working up to this I've been further exhausting myself the entire day and then when night comes try to sleep and I cannot sleep so I explained that to him and that is pretty common with Zoloft like if you you can look up the um the side effects right now and it says it can cause drowsiness but also it can cause insomnia and unfortunately I was one of the unlucky people who experienced both um so um while he didn't want me to up my Zoloft he went ahead and also prescribed me Trazodone so I did some research on Trazodone and it kind of scared me to be honest um to take those two drugs in tandem especially because I also have a prescription for Ativan um, which is a benzo for panic attacks to take as needed so I I still have I believe two full bottles of Ativan because I so seldom get actual panic attacks that I don't really need it. I think um, the beginning of the quarantine, I probably took three or four just in that first like month. But then, you know, everything kind of settled and I was fine and I wasn't panicking as much and like, you know, everything just got a little bit more, not, not better, but um, livable. Like, I think we all found kind of our groove in the context of the quarantine and, and stuff like that. Um, and um, so, but at the time, like, I, I was especially stressed because it's like, okay, you want me on Zoloft, Trazodone, and then Ativan as needed. It's like, I don't understand how my body is going to interact with this. Um, because, I, you know... Um, I've read a lot about like serotonin syndrome and I know that um, benzos are typically given, this is this is from a lot of like research I've done, but I know benzos are typically given to um, help a person come down from serotonin syndrome. But then I'm sitting here wondering like, okay, if I'm mixing pretty much, you know, um, two serotonin medications and then throw in something that lessens the serotonin. Like what? Like what's gonna happen? What are my innards gonna be doing? What's my brain gonna think of this? So I never took benzos, or I'm sorry, I never took trazodone. I've always been afraid to take trazodone. So what I'm thinking is, um, like once I'm off of Zoloft, if I'm still having a lot of issues sleeping, um, I, of course, will contact my doctor, let him know I'm totally off of Zoloft, let him know that, you know, the only medication I do take daily now will be the Adderall, um, and then kind of ask, would it be safe to take the Trazodone at night when I need it? Because I know taking Adderall is known to cause insomnia. Like, I try to take it early in the day, I'm not the type to like overtake my dose. Like I, I stay with what I'm supposed to take, um, you know, until a doctor tells me take more, take less, X, Y, and Z. I say X, Y, and Z a lot, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so I'm fine with that. And I do hear a fucking buzzing. What is in my house? I'm super rambling, I'm sorry. But, um, so, so if I need to, I can take the Adderall during the day and the Trazodone at night. Um, if it is deemed safe. But right now, no one has questioned all of these things on my medical list. on You know, on my prescriptions list. So all the doctors I've gone to have kind of looked and I guess have seen nothing alarming about Zoloft 
Adderall, Ativan, and Trazodone on the same prescription list. So, like, if, if no one else is super alarmed, maybe I should just calm the fuck down, but I don't know. I know I'm also pretty prone to side effects, obviously. I'm probably gonna cut half of this video down because it was a lot of me rambling, but um, at the same time, you know, it really does help to be able to talk about it. Um, I do I do talk therapy once a week, but it's only for 30 minutes, and um, I feel like sometimes it's hard to like truly express how I'm feeling in such a short amount of time. This has just been me talking, and I'm going to condense this to cut out the fluff. You know, I feel like during talk therapy, it's hard to cut out the fluff because I'm I'm collecting my thoughts. You know. It's a lot of rambling, just like what this video has been, but I have the um, the luxury of cutting out all the rambling or cutting out the parts where, you know, uh, I put myself down or I correct myself. And, like, that's the version of me that I want um, everyone to see. And it's not like I'm being dishonest, but it's like, these are the facts. Like, this is what I'm facing right now. This is my, like, pharmaceutical journey. This is This is my my own experience getting off of Zoloft. Um, so, yeah. All right, friends. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I don't know how much of this video is actually going to make it to YouTube, but, you know, you'll get something today. <laughs> um, I hope that you're all having a good day. Um, it's Sunday. Um, whether or not you celebrate Father's Day, um, you know, just have a good day. Have Try to have a relaxing day. Maybe you have work, but, you know, I hope that it's a good day at least.